But it's my honor really to once again put in front of you the story of the remarkable and inspiring Dr. Kazmikia Corbett. Recognized tonight not only for her critical role in developing an effective COVID-19 vaccine, but also for her powerful and highly effective role in encouraging the public to get vaccinated. In a certain way, Dr. Corbett seemed to know from an early age that she would be called upon to apply science to save the world from a terrible threat. Growing up in Hillsboro, North Carolina, she excelled in school performance and in personal willingness to help others. Work in chemistry labs followed, then undergraduate training as a Meyerhoff scholar at UMBC, and then a PhD in microbiology and immunology at the University of North Carolina. And then in 2014, she came to NIH to work in viral immunology and focused on coronaviruses. Hmm. Those the agents that had caused SARS in 2003 and MERS in 2012. And certainly many people thought that was not the end of it. And boy, were they right about coronaviruses. So think back, if you will, to the start of 2020. On January 10th, the genome sequence of a virus that was spreading rapidly in Wuhan, China, was posted on the internet. This was not influenza. This was a coronavirus. As leader of the immunopathogenesis team at NIH's Vaccine Research Center, Dr. Corbett was immediately on the case. Using the genome sequence, she and her team, with guidance from Barney Graham, who you heard from a few minutes ago, sprang into action to design an mRNA molecule that encoded the spike protein of the virus. Injection of this mRNA was intended then to instruct the body to produce that spike protein, but with no danger of actual infection. The resultant antibody response and T cell response then would prime the immune system to be ready should the real virus appear. But would this actually work? Before putting human research subjects at risk, it was Dr. Corbett's job to see if this approach provided an appropriate immune response in mice and in macaques. Her now landmark publication of this uh, preclinical study of this vaccine candidate in Nature and again in the New England Journal of Medicine provided the evidence that the mRNA approach was safe and could indeed provide protection from illness. The stage was then set for the first in human phase one clinical studies launched just 66 days after Kismikia's selection of the sequence of the mRNA. Much larger trials followed, all conducted in a double-blind, randomized fashion to see whether the mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna could actually work in people. Tony, Kizmiki, and I all held our breath when the results of the large trials were being unblinded, because that's how you do these trials. Nobody knows until you have a sufficient degree of follow-up to know whether they had worked or not. And there it was. Even better than I had dared to hope, 95% efficacy and an excellent safety profile in more than 30,000 trial participants. It doesn't usually work that way. Vaccines don't usually work, and if they work, they don't work this well. FDA provided emergency use authorization. Dr. Corbett had played a key role in advancing the development of this vaccine in truly record time, contributing to more than 40 manuscripts, and she was first or senior author on nine of those. Now, you might think that's enough of an accomplishment for the Fulbright Prize, and you could make a pretty good case of that, but Dr. Corbett did not stop there. Once these safe and effective vaccines were made available to the public, she embarked on an ambitious campaign to engage the public to reduce vaccine hesitancy and boost vaccine confidence. She was fully aware how the history of health disparities in our country has created understandable skepticism from marginalized communities about whether our medical system always has their best interests at heart. So she made a special effort to reach out to diverse communities to help answer questions and reduce anxiety about getting immunized. As an African-American woman scientist who had actually helped create the vaccine, and who knew all of the facts about its history and its track record, her credibility was across the world unmatched. And during incredibly busy and difficult times, Dr. Corbett exerted tremendous personal effort 
to share COVID-19 science with the general public, seeking to highlight the importance of following public health guidelines for slowing community transmission and serving as an advocate for vaccine accessibility and use in all populations. Personally, I've had the great privilege of getting to know Dr. Corbett over these three and a half tumultuous years. I can tell you that she is a person with an unshakable commitment to making the world a better place. And she's not done, she's just getting started with that. As Kizzy prepared two years ago to move into a new phase of more senior research leadership, I tried to convince her to stay at NIH. <laughs> she could probably tell you how irritating I was with all those phone calls. But ultimately, she decided she was ready to try a new environment. And, you know, she ended up in a pretty good place, uh, Harvard School of Public Health. <laughs> I know Kizmikia would want to be here in person, but given the impending birth of her first child, <laughs> we can all understand why she is joining us virtually tonight. So please join me in congratulating a remarkable scientist, a superb communicator, and a compelling role model for the next generation, my friend, Dr. Kizmikia Corbett.